Please join in the call to worship. Divine love, we sense you pulsing throughout all of creation. You nurture new life and plant justice like seeds. We renew this day our commitment to respecting the interdependency of life. We take responsibility for our own actions and impacts. We hold power accountable. We turn from hoarding and exploiting to seek your ways of mutual aid and redistribution. As you capture our attention with your beauty that surrounds, may we become faithful partners in tending the soils of shared life. Amen. Please join in the opening hymn. Good morning, friends. I'm Pastor Yvonne, and welcome to worship at First Church. It is a day of celebration today as we remember and give thanks for the ministry year that we have had this past year, but more information on that later. And also, happy Pride Month. Although Pride may again look different this year, it is a time to remember that you are loved just the way you are, and that you, my friends, are called beloved. We welcome those who are new to our community. This is a place to explore your spirituality and bring your questions. 
We don't have all the answers, but together we ask the hard questions and confront the troubles and injustices we see in the world. And with God's help, we use our voices and energy to bring change. First up, please fill out our check-in and connection card and let us know that you are worshiping with us this morning. And if you want to, let us know how you're doing and how we can be support for you. We also have a church bulletin ready for you to look through during the service and follow along. So you can find the check-in and connection card and the worship bulletin by going to firstchurchseattle.org slash live. After worship this morning, we hope that you can join us for Holy Communion at 1130. Bring whatever you have at hand for bread and cup and know that it is enough. You will need to register to receive the Zoom link, so please head to firstchurchseattle.org slash worship and click the online communion to register. Friends, it is good to be in worship with you this morning. May this time and space be a source of blessing for you across our many screens. Let us worship. Whoever you are, wherever you find yourself today, may this community be a place of companionship and healing for you. Rich or poor, gay or straight, homeless or housed, young or aging, full of hope or full of question. There is nothing that can separate us from God's all-embracing love. Christ invites you, Christ invites us to find him today. Let the celebration begin.
Let us bow our heads in prayer. Loving, merciful God, we open our hearts to you this morning in gratitude of our beautiful natural world, the joy of your presence, and the loving people and animals in our lives. How is it that we forget you? Through you, all loving God, our smallest acts of kindness grow into great ripples of love spreading out all around us, and your kingdom is all around us. We pray for our ever-changing world today. God, we pray for unity and healing across all generations, countries, lands, and ecosystems. We lift up our church family today. We rejoice with students and families as they graduate. We lift up with joy happy reunions that are happening with the lifting of COVID restrictions. We pray for healing and renewed strength for those of us suffering depression and anxiety and other difficulties. May we reach out to someone during this week to make a loving connection. Eternal loving God, you heal our sadness and despair, our illnesses and internal strife. With your help, may we have forgiveness for what is beyond our control. God, give us this grace and strength we need to be your people in action, reaching out to those suffering internal and external battles. We are in this together. Thank you, God, for your guidance in the dark, the joy in the ordinary, and your continuing grace. And as we walk through this week, may we see the beauty of your presence reflected in kindness to one another. Lord, in your love and grace, hear our prayer. Amen. Please join in the prayer response. The New Testament reading today is 2 Corinthians, chapter 4, verse 13, through chapter 5, verse 1. But just as we have the same spirit of faith that is in accordance with Scripture, I believed and so I spoke, we also believe and so we speak, because we know that the one who raised the Lord Jesus will raise us also with Jesus, and will bring us with you into his presence. Yes, everything is for your sake, so that grace, as it extends to more and more people, may increase thanksgiving to the glory of God. So we do not lose heart. Even though our outer nature is wasting away, our inner nature is being renewed day by day. For this slight momentary affliction is preparing us for an eternal weight of glory beyond all measure. Because we look not at what can be seen, but what, it, what cannot be seen. For what can be seen is temporary, but what cannot be seen is eternal. For we know that if the earthly tent we live in is destroyed, we have a building from God, a house not made with hands, eternal in the heavens. Gospel reading. Mark four thirty through 32 He also said, 
with what can we compare the kingdom of God, or what parable will we use for it? It is like a mustard seed, which when sown upon the ground is the smallest of all seeds on earth. Yet when it is sown, it grows up and becomes the greatest of all shrubs and puts forth large branches so that the birds of the air can make nests in its shade. This is the word of life. Thanks be to God. Hello, I'm Pastor Jeremy. Will you pray with me? May the words of my mouth and the meditation of all of our hearts be acceptable not to each other, but to you, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. At my house, we have hydrangeas on the front porch. In fact, we have hydrangeas on the, the side of the house and we have them in the backyard, all planted by the previous owner. My parents were up visiting in May. Thank you, vaccines and science. Get your shot. And I mentioned how the hydrangeas were all different breeds and different colors. And my dad said, oh yeah, the, the pine tree there will affect the soil. So it makes sense that they are the same species, but different colors. What? I thought there were different varieties, but hydrangeas, like many flowers, change their color based on the pH of the soil and I'm sure many other things that you master gardeners listening can correct me in the comments. But it's a great starting point for today's sermon on mustard seeds, that I wonder why we focus on the mustard seed instead of the soil. You see, a parable, and I'm so thankful for Pastor Yvonne choosing this month's focus on parables, help us think about something that our human minds can't quite fathom the reign of Almighty God. So what is the reign of God? Jesus says it is like a tiny mustard seed that grows into a great bush or plant far greater than you would expect secret in the soil until it emerges. Those are images that can make sense to us and to countless preachers that have focused on them. We know a lot about the seed of the mustard seed, but thinking back to the varieties of hydrangeas, what do we know about the soil? And what do we know about the sun that warmed it? What do we know about the water that gave it life or the attention of the hands on the soil in the first place? You see, the parable of the mustard seed is as much about the mustard seed as it is the whole environment in place that we have created. We know that infected soil sends bad things to seeds. Too much sun or too little hurts seeds. Nitrates in the water affect seeds. No matter how strong the seed is, we have to care for the whole ecosystem lest we find that our spiritual pH doesn't allow things to grow and thrive. Today is the end of the ministry year. And as I reflect on the last year, it has really been a mustard seed year. Small groups doing incredible things. We've had a hard year despite a huge challenge. We lost 33% of our ministry budget in 2020 and 2021 due to the lack of use of our parking garage. And it was only by your generosity, by a financial wizardry, by the administrative staff and finance team, and government assistance to distressed nonprofits that we kept our staff and ministry and missions going at full speed. That sort of caring for the whole instead of whittling away, to care, whittling away to care for the few is right in line with this scripture today that calls, calls us to consider the soil, the sun, the whole ecosystem, not just one piece of the seed. So today, thanks to all who tended the gardens this year. And it is a celebration rather than a lament. It's a day when we lift up all that has gone before us and we set our vision on what is coming next. Last week at church council meeting, we recorded one celebration from the past year from our many ministry areas. So here they are now to guide us in our celebration. Our biggest accomplishment this year was being able to keep our programs running. And we used the lockdown as a chance to be creative and play with new formats and new topics. And guess what? We did it. We had our Fate Journeys class and we hit a bumper attendance of 28 people, which was great. And we hope to continue that, you know, forever. 
During the pandemic, it was a little challenging to find ways for us to connect when we really couldn't see each other or visit with each other. So we were really proud of the fact that for Valentine's Day this year and for Easter as well, that we had uh, members of the church and members of our committee that actually delivered wonderful uh, handmade um, gifts and also a CD of Elizabeth's beautiful improvisational hymns that she had done. And we delivered these to different members of our congregation who haven't been able to get out as much. So we have been very proud of the fact that we've still been able to somehow stay connected, even through calls, emails, cards, and some special deliveries. Urban Outreach Committee would like to lift up that we restarted shared breakfast in November of 2020 by serving a hot, nutritious breakfast and takeout bags to those in need, and then expanded the meal service in March through a partnership with King County Metro, whose access vans pick up breakfast at First Church on Sunday mornings and deliver the meals to three different Compass housing shelters in downtown Seattle. Since the restart of Shared Breakfast, we have served over 2,800 meals. As you can imagine, we could not make t- take any mission trips uh, this year, so we had to be creative and find ways to express our concern for people and participate in missions. Fortunately, the uh, United Methodist Church has organized many uh, virtual missions, and the members of our committee each attended one or more virtual mission trips, and it was very, very instructive, very in- very interesting, and we hope that we can uh, offer some of those opportunities to members of the community. We also had uh, two lunch and learn opportunities, one where we were very happy to introduce Yvonne to the congregation, and the second one where we did talk about the different virtual mission opportunities available for people. Our committee organized five virtual Meaningful Movies events during the past year, and I'll highlight two of them. At our June 2020 event, we discussed the film Suppressed, The Fight to Vote, and learned from a guest speaker about the nonpartisan Reclaim Our Vote campaign to reach voters of color in states with long histories of voter suppression. Our committee organized church members and others to participate in that campaign from June through October by writing over 10,000 postcards on how to check voter registration and register to vote. At our April 2021 event, we discussed 2040, a documentary on the climate crisis, and heard from King County Executive Dow Constantine about county efforts to reduce emissions. 93 people attended and several organizations partnered with us to promote the event in their communities. Our committee is looking forward to another year of education and advocacy. The communications team would just love to highlight and just truly say a big thank you to uh, the fact that our website was updated in the last year. Um, It's a great update that truly just makes the site much more manageable. And it's a very large thank you to our communications director, Alicia. Uh, Facilitated our first um, pre-recorded broadcast Christmas and hope never to do that again. Very pleased to really be in a supportive role with staff who did a great job um, creating compelling worship services, utilizing many new technologies and facilitating worship worship experience for often uh, up to twice as many or more folks uh, than we had attending live pre-pandemic. So we're reaching more people across a a much larger geographic range uh, as we are broadcasting pre-recorded services. Uh, Now we are happy to begin facilitating the transition back to or to uh, kind of our new and future state of permanent uh, hybrid services that will be both live again at some point in the not too distant future, hopefully, as well as broadcast on an ongoing basis so that we will continue to reach uh, many more people in the future. And the Welcome and Hospitality Committee created a check-in and connection card for members and visitors to register their attendance online. This was helpful to see our visitors, who our visitors are, and to reach out to them if possible. Also, to communicate with our church members during this time of having video church services. The increase in um, family visibility 
in our services um, through scripture reading and other special um, children's moments. Um, also too, um, being um, able to um, meet the different needs of families in terms of scheduling of Sunday school um, and things of that nature um, that um, has been really successful in terms of families feeling connected and engaged. I'm happy to report the success of having a guest speaker from Black Lives Matter and Youth Sunday School and sponsoring a lunch and learn on racist for the congregation. Vintner succeeded this year by maintaining our community despite being unable to meet each other and gather in person and not being sure on a monthly or even um, seasonal basis as to what the next steps would be. So for instance, we transitioned to online pub theologies in the fall and the winter this year. We also did a coffee hour um, in February. And so that has been our greatest success. With a whole year of worshiping remotely, we realized we missed those connections and those uh, narthex conversations, but we were able to identify and fill more than 20 positions in leadership and on various committees. We are grateful for everyone who was willing to share their time and gift with First Church. Because of them, because of you, we can continue to worship, learn, and grow together. This year, SPRC decided to assign a liaison one person from SPRC for each staff and clergy person as their, as their point person. And um, we did this as a way to keep in touch. Um, we would reach out to our, our person, our clergy or staff person, once every month or two at least, just to check in with them in this odd and you know, difficult year. We found that you know, we saw quite a lot of activity both ways. Um, and I know personally um, really enjoyed that excuse and opportunity to just develop a more personal relationship with some of the staff that we probably might not have done had we not had these liaisons. We do much more than uh, meet via Zoom or in person. It's sort of a hands-on group. We have uh, people that uh, help out with the gardening on the grounds, fix it, repairs, a couple of people bring a very professional skill set to our group, which saves us a lot of money, most notably Justin Prasad and Tom Brooms. So we're really fortunate to have their hands-on experience. We're also uh, going to set the goal of trying to establish procedures for expanding the use of our church facilities, parking and sanctuary for more community uses, but we have to make sure we're compliant with uh, city and state uh, and federal tax codes on that and be compliant. So we have a great group and I'm grateful to be a part of it. Thank you. We have good news. Despite the headwinds of, the headwinds of COVID, we ended uh, the year 2020 with a $300,000 in cash reserves. That's amazing given the parking, the lack of parking garage revenue for much of 2020. Second good news is our pledging for 2021 um, was $416,000 in pledges. That is a massive achievement and represents the largest pledging amount in the last 10 years, over 10 years of First Church's history. But for a variety of reasons, we have been able to weather this storm incredibly well. So thank you to everybody to the whole congregation who, who pledged and to all those who committed to First Church. Thank you. I want to take us back to 2018 when we had a visioning opportunity to create a vision for First Church for the next three years. Remind you of what those goals were. Um, the first one was know where we are, First Church as a neighborhood hub. That effort was led by Charles Kim, and you'll recognize some of the partnerships with Seattle Women's March, Washington Immigrant Sol Solidarity Network, New Horizons Youth Shelter, and Good Neighbor Project at the Seattle Center. Those efforts were hampered a little by COVID, and we look forward to, to reinvigorating that. The second one was set the course, uh, First Church will be a spiritual culture, 
those efforts were led by Barbara Moreland and uh, really had a wonderful opportunity with 25 different facilitators and over half of the congregation, the regular worshiping congregation participating. And again, um, continued even online after COVID. The third uh, goal was uh, monitor the church, monitor the church. First church is a local church and a global perspective. And that was really led by our church and society committee. And number four was recognize the arrival. First Church will be a community of healthy communities, which was increasing the visibility and engagement of small groups. Moving forward to take what we've, what's been successful and what we've learned during this pandemic time as we prepare <clears throat> to intentionally craft a vision for the coming years that is interculturally sensitive and anti-racist. Together, we will continue discovering new possibilities in our ministry and mission at First Church. Our new visioning process, which is called lens crafting, um, and really working together to increase our skills at becoming an anti-racist and anti-colonial church. And we, the goal is to um, have four phases, with starting this summer, 2021, which is leadership development, and in phase two of the fall and winter of 2021 will be congregational development. You'll hear more. Phase three, visioning, which will be winter and spring of 2022, which is where we'll take that lens of anti-racism and build a new vision for the next three years, 2022 to 2025. And phase four is embodying. The visioning process empowers First Church to integrate what has been learned into our congregation. Wow, so many accomplishments under so many shifting restrictions. Today, there will be an end of ministry year celebration at noon where we take this a further step. We've had a three-year vision for First Church and it's come due to evaluation and expansion this year. So come to ministry celebration on Zoom to hear how we did the past three years and what lies ahead for us. So. How to sum up this year in a few minutes? Um, in the parable of the mustard seed, and there's echoes of it in the other reading, there's a hidden message that we don't get, that early audiences would have gotten. There is a huge unexpectedness when Jesus compares the reign of God to a mustard seed. See, the original audience would have expected a tree, a mighty cedar which is what his Jewish audience would have understood. It's throwbacks to Ezekiel and Daniel, um, but instead of a huge cedar tree indicating everlasting royalty, he compares the reign of God to an invasive weed, one which no one would plant because they grow without human hands, like, like blackberry bushes in the Northwest. Indeed, you tried to keep mustard plants from your garden. So really, Jesus, this is the reign of God, uh, a, a weed that would grow thick branches that would cover other plants and that uh, would allow berry-eating birds a place to, to, to reside? Yes. Yes, it is. We often think that this is just a parable about something small that becomes so big, and it is. And it is also a parable about grace and inclusion that disrupts our way of doing things. If we really seek the reign of God, really seek it, it's going to make a mess of our neat raised garden beds. It's going to break down walls. It's going to push through barriers. Uh, it, it won't look majestic or manicured like a row of cedar trees. It will look common with spray paint tags and not insta-worthy. But. It will transform the soil and the tree line and the bird sanctuaries and give us a spice to enliven our lives. May this year also be the year of the mustard seed for First Church and for you, of an urban outpost in a struggling city, of a faith kept alive so that when the city bounces back, it remembers that we never left, of a story, your story, my, our story, that we did not forget our faith, that lies in God, the tiller of the soil, the planter of the seeds, and the harvester of the fruits. We are First Church, the first church Seattle had ever seen. And if the last year is any indication of our resiliency and faith, 
there are many more firsts ahead of us. May we live into the parable of the mustard seed and go and bring the good news with us wherever we go. Glory be to God. Amen. Friends, we come now to a space where we make the connection between the word of life and how we live it out in our everyday lives. It was great to see the folks who have been leading us uh, in living out our call as a community. So thank you for the work and passion and time that you have given and have dedicated to our community this past year. And thank you, Pastor Jeremy, for reminding us of the parable of the mustard seed that looks a lot like grace overflowing so much that it disrupts our way of doing things, that it looks like remembering our faith in God so that we are co-partners in planting and cultivating and growing the work that God has called us here at First Church. And we have a few opportunities that can help us live into this more fully. Pastor Jeremy and the reflections from our many ministry areas reminded us that this has truly been a mustard seed year. Small groups doing big things. And we will keep our reflections going at the church conference today at 12 p.m as we celebrate the accomplishments of this past year and name what we are looking forward to in this next year. All are welcome. You do not need to be a member of First Church or a committee member to join the celebration. To register and receive the Zoom link, please head to firstchurchseattle.org and click events. After the church conference, all are welcome to join the Seattle Urban Pilgrimage today at 2 p.m. Pastor Jeremy reminded us that part of our story is our context in the city, the first church Seattle had ever seen. And so we hope you can join us for our pilgrimage journey today to explore parts of the city that we may have overlooked, but where a spiritual experience can be waiting for us. We hope to see you today at 2 p.m. for this time of centering in the city. It's June, and that can only mean one thing, new spiritual enrichment opportunities. For our Sunday morning class, we will focus on creation spirituality, where we will explore the idea of God's presence everywhere, in nature, in music, in art, and in the people around us. Sunday morning class actually started this morning, but you are still welcome to join us the next few Sundays in June at 9 a.m. And for our Monday night class, we will be reading Reverend Tyler Sitt's book titled, Staying Awake, The Gospel for Changemakers. And we all know Reverend Tyler because he was our guest preacher here at First Church a few weeks ago for Pentecost. In his book, he asks the question, how does our faith enable us to show up for justice and stay in the movement for the long haul? You don't have to purchase the book to join the conversation, but just a heads up, I read the book in one sitting. His joyfulness and passion really jumps off the page. Join us on Monday nights in June, starting tomorrow at 7 p.m. For more information on these classes and to register for both the Sunday morning and Monday night conversation, please visit firstchurchseattle.org and click events. Pastor Jeremy reminded us of the importance of our stories in remembering our faith and our resilience in God. Here is Barbara Moreland to tell us of a new opportunity at First Church for connection and community while centering voices of people of color. Good morning. Is there anyone who doesn't love a good story? Stories can be personal and revealing, 
where they can be educational and challenging. I especially like stories from individuals who show me a world different from my own life or who challenge me to rethink what I've always believed. Hearing someone's story told in their own words opens us up to new insights and perspectives. This is the thinking behind a new book club the First Church is launching. Together, we'll read and discuss novels and memoirs written by people of color. Each month, we'll read a different book and have a group discussion meeting via Zoom at the end of the month. We'll also have an email check-in or a chat midway through the month just to keep everybody moving forward. All are welcome to participate and we'll have a getting started meeting next Sunday, June 13th at noon via Zoom. To sign up, go to firstchurchseattle.org and click on events. I hope to see you then. Thanks. Friends, may you find space for community and spiritual growth in these opportunities. We come now to a time of confession, recognizing where we have failed to uphold God's dream for us, and at the same time, praying for God's encouragement to live our lives in love. Please join me in the call to confession. God, you call us to live as disciples of Jesus. Forgive us when we fail to hear the unexpectedness of your call. Renew your call in our lives again, and for us to say yes and follow you. God, you call us to be the church, to witness to your grace for all people. Into the lives of the poor bring hope, into the lives of the powerful bring humility, into the lives of the weary bring rest, into the lives of the busy bring wisdom and peace. Merciful God, guide all of all who journey in community, light our steps each day, that we may walk in your paths, learning to see the world and our neighbors through your eyes. Generous God, teach us how to live in your abundance and grace that overflows so much that it disrupts our way of doing things. Empower us for the work you have set before us. May the Spirit build up our faith in learning. Encourage us with hope that we may live our love for you in all our actions. We end our call to confession with a traditional translation of the Lord's Prayer. Please join me on the words on the screen or in whatever language or translation is in your heart. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Friends, please join in our closing hymn, Be Thou My Vision. The words will appear on the screen in the moment.
What a journey we've been on today. And in benediction, I wanted to stand here in our history at Wall hallway. Uh, you remember this place? It's our long history. It dates back to the 1850s to today. It's an amazing place to stand. But here's the fun thing is that the wall ends at 2010. We're only a few months into 2021, so the 2011 to 2020 decade segment hasn't been made yet. I think it's great that the next section of the wall, uh, it, it, it literally turns a corner. Uh, it indicates another massive shift for the church. And as it turns a corner, well, there's, uh, there's hand sanitizer and a fire alarm on it. <laughs> it's public health and Pentecost, it's perfect for this moment. But as we continue our day with a very busy Sunday with live communion in a few minutes, ministry celebration at noon, and an urban pilgrimage at 2 p.m., I'm reminded of all the story that we've overcome and thrived through, and I know that this next part of the story that begins today, as the world is hopefully turning a corner, that I'm glad to be on this journey, whatever lies ahead, with you. May the God who created you, Jesus who redeemed you, and the spirit that sustains you be with you wherever the winds take you today. And may that accompaniment bring you peace. Go in peace. Amen.